from your PHLV Radio family, Merry Christmas and all the best in the coming year. Merry Christmas from your friends at PHLV Radio. Reeves Immigration Law Group now brings you Immigration Law on Your Side. Magandang gabi mga kababayan. Welcome to another episode of uh, Immigration Law on Your Side from Reeves Immigration Law Group. And syempre galing din po sa PHLV Radio. Ako po yung nang dito sa Las Vegas, Nevada. And of course, Attorney Diza coming out to you from uh, the Bay Area. Maligayang Pasko po at uh, manigong bagong uh, taon po sa inyong lahat uh, as we uh, count down towards the end of the year. Alam mo, 20 20 indeed was a historic year and uh, with the pandemic still raging across the globe and the US elections and many more that happened in 2020 magandang uh, balikan natin ang uh, 2020 but tonight not only that we're going to be talking about uh, 2020 babalikan natin we're going to look back uh, at the four years of uh, immigration uh, what happened uh, to immigration during the four years of uh, president trump's uh, administration and uh, the current situation and the possible solution to some of the problems that we're facing as far as immigration is uh, concerned and also to we're going to give you some updates, mga kababayan, as far as immigration is uh, concerned. So let's bring in live from uh, the uh, Reeves Immigration Law Group uh, in uh, the Bay Area, in San Francisco, the Golden State of California. Magandang, magandang gabi po sa iyo, Attorney Diza. Magandang gabi, Kuya Yo, at uh, mal- malamig na kayo. Ang December, as you mentioned, maligayang Pasko po sa inyong lahat. At sana po, uh, as you mentioned, matapos na itong 2020, we can't wait for a better and brighter 2021. No? At uh, nabanggit mo nga, 2020 tapos na ang election at uh, recently nagkaroon na ng declaration ng Electoral College uh, proclaiming uh, President-elect Biden as the winner of the 2020 presidential election. And that's a good news for immigration. Actually, we're hoping and anticipating for his inauguration. And it's very timely yung ating pag-uusapan ngayon dahil you know, yung four years na dinaanan natin at mga magginawa po natin uh, parang dumaan lang din sa atin despite the hardship, many hardships na dinaanan po ng mga immigrants and immigration attorneys. But looking back, uh, it's a good it's a good idea, you know, to uh, see and uh, assess kung ano po yung mga dinaanan natin at kung mga policies ba ng Trump administration ay itutuloy at mat, um, itutuloy pa at kung hindi man, uh, ano po ang mga tinitignan natin uh, moving forward. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we've uh, been uh, talking about uh, some of uh, the immigration policies of the current administration over the past few episodes, mga kababayan, babalikan natin ito ngayon para maalala natin. And if there are situations that need some solutions, malalaman natin tonight uh, from Reeves Immigration uh, Law Group. But before we uh, start, Attorney, uh, kumustahin lamang namin kayo dyan sa California. Kumusta po ang sitwasyon ng ating uh, uh, Reeves Immigration Law Group? And uh, uh, generally... Uh, nalaman namin mukhang medyo naka tight na naman ang lockdown sa inyo diyan sa California. <laughs> that's that's no clear and the good thing is we're still alive and kicking, right? And still working, but um, seriously ang uh, ang uh, governor and the mayor of San Francisco declared yung uh, um, lockdown ulit ano at only essential workers are allowed to go uh, work. Uh, in fact, ang uh, law firm, ang uh, immigration law firm kagaya namin are considered essential workers. But we still follow yung CDC and local um, laws or local uh, or the government instructions for us to uh, minimize you know, spread ng COVID dahil talala ng palala, as you mentioned. So basically, Kuya, we are at 20% capacity yung aming uh, pumapasok sa opisina and uh, we don't still allow in-person, uh, face-to-face in-person with with clients, consultation or preparation. We do uh, kagaya ng ginagawa natin, Zoom or telephone and um, having preparation and consultation. So we are doing our part and hopefully with the vaccines, you know, uh, that's already in place, hopefully eh, babalik tayo sa normal very soon. So uh, ginagawa lang natin ang ating dapat gawin. 
Nako, marami salamat, uh, attorney, sa uh, update na yan. And uh, kami naman dito sa Las Vegas, we can't, wa can't wait for 2020 to be over. In fact, uh, uh, we've got wind of the news that uh, there's going to be a huge 2020 sign that's going to be blown up at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> blown up, kick out, kick out. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, 2020. Well, yeah. anyway, attorney, uh, pag-usapan natin ang itong uh, past four years of immigration under uh, President Trump. Uh, what what are the highlights of uh, the uh, four years of uh, President Trump's uh, immigration policies? Uh, on top of my head, I'm thinking about DACA. Is it the, is it the top uh, thing? Uh, in, uh, yeah, that's policy? one of the uh, you know highlights and important policy changes in immigration by President Trump. In fact, when he was campaigning to become a president, you know, it's mga you know uh, is to to uh, end the DACA, you know, end the DACA and build the wall, uh, let Mexico pay for it. Then, of course. The building of a uh, wall, of course, is also one. And uh, although hindi affected yung mga kababayan natin because we travel by plane, right? Uh, yung mga nasa southern border are uh, mostly affected and spent billions of dollars just to build the wall. So I'm not sure if the, the what we call is the Biden administration will going to continue that. Kasi no matter how big the wall is, you know, kung mayroong paraan para pumasok, di ba, people will jump, people will build uh, stairs or dig or swim the ocean to just uh, get into the U.S. But anyway, we'll talk about the DACA because this will mostly affect our kababayan and uh, marami sa atin, out of the 750,000 or 1 million, marami po mga Pilipino ang affected dito at marami din tayong finay. Um, and as we, uh, to, to recap, ano po, ito yung uh, DACA, ito yung pinasaan ni President Obama noong 2012. Sinasabi niya yung mga young immigrants who entered the United States before they turned 16 on or before 2007. And they have to continue physical presence or uh, continuously resided or residing in the U.S. up to 2012. Wala na silang status. They go to school, went to school. They joined the military walang serious uh, criminal uh, convictions and they're able to defer yung deportation at bibigyan pa sila ng uh, work authorization ng dalawang taon kuya yun. Now, that's really a good thing para sa mga young immigrants uh, that was become affected in 2012. Pero five years uh, after in 2017 as President Trump promised uh, he ended up with DACA by an executive order. So marami mga challenges. Ano? So ang nangyayari since 2017, wala na. Hindi na sila tumatanggap ng new DACA. Um, but with the, uh, what do you call this, with immigration advocates and attorneys going to courts questioning the legality ng DACA, you know, marami mga nabago at pagbabago. So until recently, ang uh, US Supreme Court said uh, unconstitutional yung pag-terminate ng DACA. So then, uh, we are hoping na ibalik nila kaagad yung, yung uh, new DACA, yung mga new applicants. Kasi as we mentioned, maraming hindi eligible dahil hindi ka naman pwede mag-file basta not until you reach a certain age of 15, di ba? So yung mga below 15 in 2012, hindi sila pwede mag-file. So ngayon, uh, we are going to announce to, through this program ano, na nag-accept na ulit uh, ang USCIS under that US Supreme Court decision ng new applications, right? starting December. So, yung 2017 na in-stop yung pag-accept ng new DACA applications, it's going to be re-implemented again uh, this December. So, hopefully, tuloy-tuloy na yan. Right, so, mga hindi pa nagpa-file. And I know many clients and potential clients uh, who consulted with me who missed the opportunity to file right in 2012 until nung, nung uh, na, 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 na terminate yung DACA sa, sa kala silang nag realize na okay lang ko palang i-file, di ba? Mas maraming benefit because they're able to get the work authorization. And and most people were afraid to file the DACA kasi ang, ang katwiran nila is that nasa sistema daw sila ng immigration. And that's true, you know? But the thing is, if you contribute to the economy, you're working, you have family, you have children, you're, you know, you're in the military, you don't commit a crime. I don't think that even if you're in the radar ng, ng USCIS, you know, I don't think may priority ka. Right? Uh, that's the purpose of the de deferment or, you know, the deferred na pag-deport sa mga, mga young immigrants is to give them work permit and become more productive member of the society. So, that's really a good news kasi na-re-implement ulit yung DACA and hopefully with the Biden administration po yun, ay magkakaroon sila ng pathway to a green card or citizenship.
Na mention niyo attorney yung uh, pagtatrabaho, you know, contributing to uh, the society. Uh, ito po bang mga DACA recipients, uh, if I remember it right, they have employment authorizations as well, right? Correct. It's valid for two years. Uh, mm-hmm. And that work permit po yun, they're able to apply for any job that they want. Di ba? Hindi kagaya ng H-1B na masyado silang employ- na- 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 nakatay sa employer nila, na petition. But the DACA, you know, if they want to go to uh, whatever companies they, they, they like, you know, uh, they're able to provide the work authorization. And not only that, they can put up a business, you know, on their own. Um, and they can also go to school, you know, medical school, law school, you know, for their studies. But join the military as well. So those are the benefits of having that DACA status and with that work authorization for valid for two years. And of course, pwedeng i-renew for another two years. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, mga kaibigan, uh, yan ang update ni attorney regarding uh, DACA and uh, some, some, uh, a backgrounder na rin uh, regarding that. I'm sure in the next uh, few weeks, uh, next few months or hopefully weeks, mayroon tayong mga bagong balita regarding uh, DACA. And also on past episodes, we talked about uh, other issues, uh, uh, iba pang mga declarations, iba pang mga policies uh, of the current administration. And one of the episodes that we've had this year, we talked about uh, attorney itong uh, public charge uh, restrictions on awarding green cards. Uh, ma-refresh natin ang memory ng ating mga kababayan attorney regarding this uh, public charge rule. Yes, uh, in order for a family member uh, petitioning if another family member, either a spouse, right, with children or siblings, parents, or anything like that, they have to do an affidavit support, right, to, to uh, show that the intending immigrants are not likely to become a public charge. Meaning, ano ba yung public charge? Hindi sila humihingi ng pera or ng uh, ano man sa gobyerno. So in case that immigrant uh, becomes a public charge, then the government can go after whoever filed the petition, right? Um, and then uh, they can only provide that to show that they won't be a public charge by providing an affidavit of support, right? So let's say merong merong nakalagay dun sa poverty guidelines kung ano yung income, right? So let's say family of three, you know, kailangan nila ng at least 25,000, sample lang, 25,000 a year para, you know, para ipakita that hindi magiging public charge yung, yung beneficiary or yung intending immigrant. Now, with the Trump administration, ito sa mga, isang, sa mga uh, difficulties natin, of course, is that if the immigrants had asked for, you know, public charge in the past, you know, for the last 12, 24 months, at kagaya ng uh, uh, what do you call this, yung SNAP, yung, uh, yung food stamp, right? Or social security income, or uh, housing benefits. But most most states naman, Kuya, yun, this uh, public charge na, na, na exclude or mga, mga tawag nito public charge na enumerate ng gobyerno are only available sa mga uh, immigrants or U.S. citizen na. But uh, of course, pag, pag hindi pa sila green card holder, right, uh, then that will be taken against them. Now, there are many, uh, now, does not, does not only apply for people adjusting status in the U.S. Uh, it also applies for uh, people getting their visas or immigrant visas abroad, kagaya sa U.S. Embassy in Manila. Ang experience po natin dyan is before the pandemic, uh, they require the petitioner to buy or purchase sila ng katawag nitong medical insurance para sa anak nila or para sa magulang na pinipetisyon. So that's one of the requirements then. Now, this public charge rule is, is still in place in the U.S., right, when you're adjusting status. In fact, uh, there are many conflicting decisions, you know, and different courts have different interpretation. But the current one is that in place pa rin to, kuya, it's still on, in place, right? You still have to comply with the requirements. And what that means is that if you marry a U.S. citizen or let's say pinetition kayo ng magulang nyo and it's current and you're adjusting status in the U.S., kailangan kayo mag-file ng tinatawag ng self-sufficiency. So, nandun yung questionnaires doon, kuya, yo, and also declarations saying that you, you are self-sufficient or your petition is able to sponsor you and financially support you, you know, while you are obtaining your green card or while you're in green card status. So uh, there's a form, right, na tinatawag na self-sufficiency that the applicant needs to fill out. 
right? They ask, you know, a lot of questions regarding your credit score, you know, your bank accounts, your credit card statements, kung magkano utang mo, uh, ano yung mga loans mo, yung mga magkano income mo, anong natapos mo, right? Are you able to uh, work in the U.S. and you're able to speak English and blend in well in the U.S. to be able to work and obtain a, you know, a sustainable income. So you have to answer is still in place. Uh, we cautioned our uh, clients uh, and applicants that even with the conflicting decisions and courts, uh, we still file in self-sufficiency to make sure that the application will not be rejected, right, or denied. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the uh, incoming administration, what what? Uh, what can you see uh, about this uh, policy, attorney? Uh, to buy Marie Relax in the future, you think? Yeah, the, the, the problem with uh, sometimes with the executive order, right, it's going to be difficult because that's the existing law already, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the Biden administration might try to overturn that by another executive order, but this is being questioned again, uh, the, the constitutionality and validity of certain laws. Right, uh, go to court. So, medyo matatagalan siguro. Uh, kagaya, ni, kagaya ni Trump, di ba? So, let's say uh, Obama has this executive order, so he tried to invalidate that through another executive order, you know, rescinding the DACA. But this might, again, uh, some 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 uh, sectors might question uh, the the uh, executive order that the uh, current or the, the incoming administration was going to pursue. But nonetheless, we're still hopeful that with the harshness of the uh, Trump's immigration policy, we're looking forward na magiging uh, lax ito. But even if it's not, you know, even if it's not implemented um, yet, uh, we still have to follow the existing law. Uh, we're hopeful, Kuya Yo, if you question whether whether uh, President-elect Biden is going to overturn this uh, public charge uh, law is, uh, remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll be here. Nandito na tayo para ibigay ang, ang uh, impormasyon uh, sa ating uh, mga kababayan. So mga kababayan, tutok lamang po kayo. Attorney, uh, m moving on, you know, we've uh, we've had a lot of uh, discussions uh, over the past, uh, well, technically over the past four years, na talagang merong increased immigration enforcement, you know. As, as, as a matter of fact, uh, here at Immigration Law on Your Side, uh, we always say that it's very dynamic and it's exciting because napakaraming mga balita. So over the past few years, uh, attorney, um, walk us through uh, how we felt that there was an increased immigration enforcement by this uh, current administration. It's uh, really, there's an really increase in enforcement, meaning that people who are here illegally, right, gaya ng mga Mexicans or South Americans who cross the border, or people who overstayed their visa, right, like Filipinos or uh, Filipinos, the people who have a valid status when they enter, right? They were inspected and admitted, but they overstayed their visa. Let's mm -hmm. say, visa sila for six months, so nag-overstay sila, each one visa sila, and then nag-tapos yung three years, hindi na sila umalis, you know, stuff like that. So, yung mga situation na ganun, of course, it's sila yung mga, yung mga wala nang status, wala nang papel, overstay, you know, you increase enforcement, nagiging mas, ano sa, nagiging mas matakot sila during, during Trump administration. And if you remember, Kuya Yo, at sa lahat ng mga listeners natin, there was a point, I think twice in our program, that we discussed, you know, your rights, di ba? Because mm -hmm. maraming maraming kumakatok sa pintuan, you know, sinisita sa daan, sinisita sa trabaho, sa workplace, you know, nasa sasakyan, public transportation and everything, that, that these ICE agents and even <coughs> law enforcement are, are questioning your status. So then, uh, with told our clients to know your rights. Now, uh, I refuse to answer your questions. I, I uh, invoke my right to remain silent and stuff like that. But looking back, we, you know, during the Trump administration, as we mentioned, um, is that being an overstay or violated the status alone uh, would, you know, would, uh, there's a, that risk that, that you're being deported, right? In kagaya noon na, you're doing your stuff, you're, you're working and, uh, you know, sending money to your families back home, right? No walang crimes. Uh, okay ka, di ba? But of course, with the Trump administration, even the violation of overstay or even a violation of minor offense, kagaya ng traffic violations, you know, or some something like that that puts you on the bar, it's going, it was very, very 
risky, you know, at that point. So you mga increase enforcement, not only that, Kuyoyo, but people who have, you know, pending application, right? nag sila ng U.S. citizen and uh, the marriage didn't, uh, you know, work. And so, nag ng green card, but the U.S. citizen spouse refused to cooperate. So, na-deny yung application. So, in the denial, that point, you expect that a notice to appear, you know, will be issued against uh, against the beneficiary or against the applicant. So, yung mga reason, ang daming mga executive orders and memos that were implemented, right? Yung, yung uh, also, let's say, you file an application uh, that's incomplete, right? Uh, there's an outright denial of your case. Uh, unlike in the past where, you know, uh, USCIS would send you, you know, piece that says there is what we call RFE or request for evidence, uh, saying that the applicants, you know, failed to provide this documentation they're requesting that you provide. But now with the, with the, the Trump administration, they don't look at that anymore. It's just one incomplete documentation might be a reason for the denial of the case. So you know again, and also the, that's what the expedited removal that we mentioned, right? Your expedited removal that only applies to the port of entry, right? Yung um, ka that you're coming here uh, to work instead of uh, B1, B2, or you're coming here for business or for pleasure, but they found out that you're working with your cousin's restaurant or uncle's, you know, care home uh, company at one time, and they I forced you to admit, right, to, that, that you did all these things, and with that admission, the Kakarana expedited removal. Not only that, people who are here for a certain period of time, less than two years, Right, um, they can also expeditedly remove them without if they fail to provide evidence that they were here for about two years. So, yung mga paraan na yung mga memos and, and executive orders that make or made uh, sa mga natin and immigrants or who are here unlawfully and illegally uh, difficult to navigate and to live their normal life because of these policies. Yes, and of course, uh, one of the uh, issues that divided the nation is uh, this increased uh, immigration enforcement. Yung iba, mag okay daw, yung iba, hindi. But uh, we will be uh, proceeding with the more of the uh, of the, uh, uh, the things that happened over the past four years. Attorney, naalala natin yung uh, travel ban and uh, refugee suspension. This, this is one of the biggest things that uh, we've talked about over the past uh, few months. Um, walk us through the, uh, the situation. Uh, I think it was in 2017 when the president signed an executive order about this one. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, the policy uh, uh, protecting the American citizens or the nation from terrorist attacks by foreign nations, you know. So there were there were several um, what do you call this uh, travel ban one two three right mm -hmm. and different countries as well. Unfortunately, um, or you know, hindi kasamang Pilipinas, but mostly our Muslim-dominated countries where uh, the president said that you know this where the, the terrorists come from. In fact, most of immigration advocates says that the terrorist attackers right of the 9/11 uh, didn't come from any of those countries. So and why why you know single out the, these countries you know that are Muslim dominated. So the the version of the, the uh, travel ban one and two didn't pass uh, you know the courts. So they nullified that and invalidated it because of it's unconstitutional. But the, but you know uh, of course the, the Trump uh, the administration were able to finally come up with a uh, an executive order, you know <clears throat> So they were able to pass that. So that's still in place, right? Affecting millions of uh, immigrants from these countries as well. So hopefully, uh, with the Biden administration in election, I mean, as we mentioned, uh, the U.S. embassies worldwide play. Uh, there's a way for them to, you know, what they call this to uh, to. Uh, um, right? uh, when you apply for a visa, uh, there's a way for them to, to look at the records of the applicants to uh, determine whether they are terrorists or not, right? So, in screening, mabigat masyado din, diba? Tinitignan lahat with all the, the technologies that we have, especially the U.S., you know, may paraan naman sila para malaman. So, I don't think that, the, I think the Biden administration will invalidate the travel ban and the Muslim ban, and hopefully our brothers and sisters from these countries will be able to join, you know, their families as well in in the United States.
Oh, kasi marami din sila. With all of these countries, is is over a hundred million people affected by uh, this uh, travel ban and uh, refugee suspension. Uh, attorney, before we head over to a break, to remind our uh, listeners and viewers about uh, uh, Reeves Immigration uh, Law Group, um, it's uh, the end of the year na, and then napag-usapan natin a few episodes ago itong uh, uh, yung hindi pwedeng dumating dito sa Amerika, ang mga immigrants. Uh, what happened to this? And uh, ngayong magtatapos na ang taon, ito matatapos na rin ba? We're, we're praying and hoping, Kuya, uh, it's what we call suspending the entry of immigrants mm-hmm. into the U.S. because of the pandemic, right? Kung mga nakakita ng opportunity, which is, I think, that's under, also kind of understandable because of the situation as well, di ba? So there is that, the suspension of the entry of immigrants. It's, it both applies to immigrants and non-immigrants, as, as, you may, as we uh, recall. Uh, hindi lang mga petition ng pamilya kundi na petition din ng employer no? uh, on a non-immigrant basis. So it's going to end December 31 of this year. So hopefully, uh, update natin din ang embassy natin sa Manila. Uh, they are partially open. Uh, in fact, they are open for U.S. citizen questions. But but they are <laughs> still closed uh, in the... Um, yung, yung sa... Yung, Right, yung mga regular applications are still pending, right? Hindi sila tatawag, but we have some cases where we ask for exemption. So as we mentioned in sa ating mga discussions, pala, yung, one of the big uh, thing then ng club administration is suspending the entry of immigrants. But there are exceptions that we ask, we're able to ask the embassy and the National Visa Center uh, para interview yung mga kababayan natin doon. You know, uh, una, una dyan yung mga mag-age out, di ba? So, um dapat yung bata makarating bago mag-21, otherwise, you know, mag-age out siya and he has to wait for another 12 years. So, yung mga ganung sitwasyon, nakakuha po tayo ng interview, nakakuha po tayo ng medical exam, uh, and then may interview sila, and may mga clients po tayo na, na nakarating na. But also reminding our viewers and listeners, itong suspending the entry of immigrants, yung exception dyan is, aside from bagit natin mag-age out, if you are married to a citizen, ang petition ninyo ang asawa ninyo a citizen, or kayo po U.S. citizen at pinipetition nyo ang minor child, minor children, exempted po kayo. Unfortunately, mga green card holders lang, marami rin akong client dyan, hindi na pinipetition ng pamilya, ang kanilang anak, asawa, hindi po kasama sa exemption. Uh, but aside from those, you know, your spouse and children of U.S. citizen and uh, age out children, kasama din yung nasa people working in the medical field. You know, a lot of people does not know this. They thought that you know, uh, this only applies for employer. Sabi ko hindi, if you are petitioned by your dad, you know, or your spouse, and you or work in the medical field, you should be able to get an exemption. But reminding our kababayan ko yun, magtatapos na sa, sa, sa December 31, I hope that it will not be extended, right? Kasi otherwise, if they do, what kayo po na sa exemption, call our office to do a consultation whether you are you know, you fit into the exception. Otherwise, Kuya Yo, uh, if this will pass after December 31, that mag expire na after December 31, uh, yung mga nakapila na dyan na natapos na yung process, you know, may mga client din tayo na pinatawag na ng interview nung uh, February, March, April, kaya lang kinansel because of the pandemic at naghintay ulit ng another interview, you know, you have to call the embassy or go to the website to set an appointment. So that's what we do here at this Immigration Law Group because we have an office in Makati to set appointments, right? To call the embassy, to, uh, you know, uh, bag the embassy and say, hey, I am included in this exception. I'm already first in line, you know, set me an appointment. So that's what we do, right? Hopefully after December 31, you could just imagine a lot of people yung, yung uh, na-delay, you know, naka, nakaabang na, nakapila na. So if you don't know what you're doing, you know, ma, na, ma, mapupunta ka sa last. So what we advise our clients, make sure that all your documents submitted with the National Visa Center are complete. Right, uh, you can go to their website, yung, yung SEAC account po ninyo, yung NVC account, look if there are incomplete documents. Uh, kung meron, complain nyo ka agad. Uh, kung kompleto na po kayo, I would strongly advise you then to update, uh, to update rather yung immigration uh, documents po ninyo na request nila, kagaya ng birth certificate, yung NBI, kung mahigit isang taon na yan, mag-iisang taon yan, make sure to, to prepare, you know, to apply for a new one para 
pagka uh, nag-interview po kayo, napatawag ng interview, ready na po lahat mga yon. So yun po ang updates ng suspension of the entry of immigrants sa kayo as ambassador natin. As we mentioned, because of the pandemic, we're still in quarantine uh, sa Pilipinas din. So very limited ang kanilang capacity at ang kanilang in-interview as of this time. So hopefully with the vaccinations and with the new administration, uh, medyo lumuwag na. Kasi you can just imagine yung delay, Kuya Yo, no, kung ganito kabagal at hindi sila mag-interview. But uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed that uh, things will be different in 2021. Oh, oh malapit na yan. And, uh, and uh, as you mentioned, uh, yung mga vaccines uh, nagsimula na mag-roll out, mga kababayan. And uh, para sa ating mga viewers and listeners in the Philippines, uh, dito po sa Amerika, nagsimula na. Uh, dito sa amin sa Las Vegas, sa uh, mga kaibigan natin from the University Medical Centers, iba sa kanila ay nakatanggap na ng uh, mga vaccines. So we'll see. We, we will wait and see uh, what happens. Uh, in the coming uh, uh, weeks. Mga uh, and attorney, we'll uh, head over to a break uh, to remind our listeners of uh, the Reeves Immigration Law Group and how to contact our friends from Reeves Immigration Law Group uh, worldwide, mga kabigan. Uh, when we come back, we'll be talking more about, uh, you know, what are the solutions for people with, you know, that are still waiting for immigration relief. And iba pang mga updates, mga kabigan, as far as immigration is concerned. Sa pagbabalik po ng immigration law on your side right here at P. HLV Radio. Reeves Immigration Law Group has been representing immigrants for nearly 40 years. Reeves Immigration Law Group has been fighting for its clients through experience and expertise. With immigration lawyers, you can access at reasonable fees even on Saturday. Payment plans are also available. Call us for your immigration solutions. We can do worldwide telephone and Skype consultations. Reeves Immigration Law Group. 1-800-795-8009. Reeves Immigration Law Law Group has offices in Los Angeles, San Francisco, China, and Philippines. See us at www.rreeves.com. Reeves Immigration Law Group, 1-800-795-8009. Mga kababayan, nagbabalik po ang Immigration Law on your side. We are on PHLV Radio every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, mga kababayan, pwede po kayo mag-email sa Reeves Immigration Law Group or dito po sa PHLV Radio. We'll put the information on, on the screen para po sa inyong mga katanungan. Before we headed uh, to uh, this break, uh, na, na banggit ko na pag-uusapan natin, na, mga kabigan, ang iba pang mga solution for people who are still waiting immigration relief. I'm sure a lot of people are, are, are still waiting, especially with the pandemic. Uh, uh, maraming mga tao ang nag, na, yung mga application nila, pending, ng pending, ng pending. Well, for those people, attorney, na talagang medyo worried na worried na, what can they do? Can they reach out to the uh, law firm and uh, try to find out what's going on? Yes, Kuya Yo. At in fact, uh, you know, siguro sa mga kababayan natin na wala pang status, ano, mm-hmm. kayo po nakikinig at nanonood, you know, may mga kamag-anak po kayo dito na hindi pa kumukonsulta ng abogado, siguro maganda pong uh, pa-Christmas sa sarili po ninyo o sa kamag-anak niyo to advise them to consult with an immigration attorney. Right? Kagaya namin, we have, you know, we offer free consultation at this time, you know, Christmas time and also pandemic season. Uh, right? So we do... Uh, free consultation to assess your case and you can just imagine the you know the what do you call is the, the impact kung meron po kayong case at meron kayong pwedeng gawin po sa inyo uh, it's not that then well, you don't want to be tago ng tago for the rest of your life you don't want to be working and working and working even if you have work, even if you have a valid social security number right kasi marami sa atin kuya yung mga before 9-11 nandito na sila and they were able to get a social security at one point Legal yan, you know, legal yung trabaho nila, they've been working for 30 years, but, but the retirement thing, keep that in mind, if you're going to retire, hindi po nyo magutuha ng yung retirement benefits kung wala po kayong uh, green card or legal status, and that's gonna be a heartbroken, you know, uh, situation kung hindi po nyo magutuha yung pinaghirapan nyo for the rest of your life. So, Isa-isayin natin, of course, as I said, it's a good idea to sit down with an immigration attorney at Reeves Immigration Law Group. We are all, um, most of us and the partners are all immigration specialists. Uh, sit down and assess your case. Uh, may mga paraan yan. Marami actually yung paraan, yung family-based petition, right? Um, kung mayroon po kayong asawa, anak, magulang, maybe your father was a US citizen, maybe you're now a citizen, you know? So, isa sa mga ganyan, or maybe your uncle petitioned your dad in 1970 or 19, 
80 when you were not really a minor. And probably there's an employer who wants to petition for you. Pwede yun. Kasi kung 245i po kayo, protected kayo despite being overstay. Right? Titignan po ninyo yan. Or maybe meron kayong prior removal order that you were not able to um, receive because you changed address. Probably we can reopen your case, you know, and probably your prior attorney messed up your case and we can say there was an ineffective assistance of counsel and a good reason to reopen, you know. So this is family based, but in employment based, as we mentioned to you, especially for people who are you know covered under the the Clinton 245I, uh, which we discussed in a prior episode. Uh, there's also you were married to you a citizen at one time, and you were subjected to extreme battery and cruelty, right? Whether in yan, maybe you witnessed a crime, maybe you were a victim of a crime, right? Kait uh, in the 1990s, as long as we can. Uh, probably look at the criminal records, right? That's what we call the, we discussed in our prior episode, you know, victim of crimes, new visa, and the trafficking crimes. You were trafficked here to come here and work here, you know, um, and and uh, you can prove that you are being trafficked, not being paid, you know, then we can probably file for a new visa or a T visa. Or probably you, you fear of going back home because you were, you know, a member of a political party or probably... You know, your, your your family member was kidnapped at one point, uh, you know, and, and, and some elements in your home country were being threatened. Uh, by, uh, the, you were being threatened, you know, uh, and, and your business and your families were being um, uh, physically uh, sort of because of your, your your religion or because of your political people opinion. So, yung tataw natin asylum na diniscuss din natin. So, may mga paraan po at uh, isa sa mga, ito lang mga few of the relief na pwede po ninyong gawin kapag nandito na po kayo sa US and and by sitting down with us probably we can look for and direct you, you know, the best uh, relief and best application that will lead you to become a green card holder. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure napakarami pang ibang uh, ways uh, para mga kaibigan na uh, you can obtain lawful uh, status here in the United States. So, umusulta na po sa ating mga kaibigan from Reeves Immigration Law Group. Uh, you you mentioned, attorney, about uh, you know having a green card. And we know of a lot of people, mga kababayan, na, kababayan natin, ha? may mga green cards na, matagal nang may green card, but yet they haven't applied for U.S. citizenship. What can you advise them, attorney, especially at this time? Yes, I strongly encourage sa mga kababayan natin to apply already. Uh, there was also a, uh, um, what do you call this, um, uh, memo, right, or an executive order increasing the fees. Sa payan, increasing the fees, uh, if you're hiring an attorney, of course, tataas din mga, mga sa tagal ng panahon, tataas din mga professional fees, right? And who knows, um, there might be changes also in civic, there's also a pending uh, change in the civic history, you know, aside from the 100 questions for you, you know, going parang 200 questions, aside from 10, ans- 10 questions, you answered 6 correctly, like 20, going 20 questions. So, the the, the the examinations might be more difficult, right? Lalo sa mga natin, as we grow older, di ba, yung ating memory, hindi na kasing sharp <laughs> tayo na pa. So, Take that into consideration. Now, if you don't want to lose your your nationality being a Filipino, you know, meron naman dual citizenship, right? So you can uh, enjoy both ways. Um, at marami siyempre ang benefit ang pagiging US citizen. Hopefully, babalik tayo sa normal kuya yo at we can travel, you know, anywhere that we want, uh, you know, especially uh, with the uh, holding a US passport. Di ba? Maganda rin yan. Magandang, mas, mas okay yan kasi hindi mo na kailangan ng, ng visa, you know, to travel to Europe kung kayo po ay U.S. citizen. And not only that, you can also participate in the election process ng, ng U.S. And and I heard that there are more benefits as well, like yung mga pagtanggap ng social security income, you know, social security benefits, mas maganda pa rin kung kayo po U.S. citizen. So, yung mga hindi pa nag-file ng petition, it's a good idea to file now before the examination becomes more difficult and before another fee increase will be recommended. Nako, ma. Isipin nyo, magiging 200 na yung, ano, yung, yung uh, 
questions na pagpipilian nila. So, uh, medyo kailangan mag, uh, mag-review ng mas matagal. <laughs> Plus, of course, there will be changes. In the, you know, the, there will be new uh, personalities in the government. Now, you will have to change kung sino ngayon yung magiging ganito, sino yung ganyan, sino yung senator mo, or something like that. So, it's better now uh, than, uh, you know, wag nang i-delay, sabi nga po ni uh, Attorney Diza. Well, uh, anyway, Attorney, napakaganda nitong uh, ating uh, pagbabalik now, especially with uh, the past four years of uh, President Trump's uh, immigration policies. Um, and uh, hindi lang tayo magbabalik tanaw, mga kababayan. Of course, we wanted to look forward as well and try to find out uh, what's going on right now and uh, how this will affect us in the next uh, few months. Uh, while we're here, attorney, um, I'll remind our audience, uh, kasi napapanood din po tayo sa podcast natin, uh, you might be uh, viewing us uh, after the episode uh, today. Uh, the information that we'll be uh, telling you in the next uh, few uh, minutes, uh, they are current as of uh, December 16th, uh, 2020. So, uh, Attorney, ano po ang mga updates natin sa ating uh, immigration uh, ngayon? Yeah, natin yung portion ng U.S. Embassy. We already discussed that. They personally reopened and, uh, you know, uh, conducts interviews for the exemption ng, ng suspension of the entry of immigrants. Hopefully by uh, January of 2021, full blown na ulit ang uh, ang uh, interviews, uh, you know, considering na mag- malilift na yung suspension or hindi na ma-extend, but also keep in mind that the pandemic may still restrict, you know, yung, yung uh, interviews. Uh, but but uh, we are being positive, hopefully, you know, uh, we go through this one already in 2021. Now, yung mga courts, immigration courts, the same thing, Kuya Yo, it's still, it's still um, you know, do telephonic interviews, um, very limited on capacity. Of course, we have to observe that the, the CDC guidelines and local lo- local um, directives. Uh, then there's a good news for the, the what do you call this, a, a proposal or a bill that was passed by uh, House of Representatives in July, and it was passed by Senate also uh, this month, uh, December 12, uh, 2020. 2020. Um, but, of course, kailangan nilang magkaroon ng uh, reconcile yung kanilang differences. But it's still a good news. Hopefully, uh, both chambers will pass this law. And even with the Republican-dominated uh, Senate ngayon, they still were able to pass this. Essentially, as sinasabi nito, Kuya Yo, yung tinatawag natin na, let me just uh, see here, it's Fairness for High-Skilled Immigrants. It's a, a House Resolution Number 1044 and Senate Bill 386. Uh, that says the increase nila yung yung uh, entries ng family base kasi that is 7% lang eh. ngayon gagawin 15% and that's a big thing di ba lalo sa ating mga kababayan yung mga petition ng mga magulang for married children that takes 20 years or siblings so hopefully hopefully uh, malalasan ang waiting time so that's also a reminder sa mga kababayan natin to file that petition already if you think that's gonna take 20 years who knows the Biden administration will take only 5-10 years so we'll find out so that's already on the Proposal. And then also, sa mga, it's a good news sa mga registered nurses and physical therapists. Merong naka, let's say, around 4,500 yata na visa, right? If you're coming here uh, to work as a nurse, a registered nurse or physical therapist. Uh, although yung EB3, kasi nasa EB3 sila, di ba? So kailangan subject sila ng quota. Di ba? Minsan nag, nagkakaroon ng retrogression. Uh, there was a waiting time of seven years, five years. Uh, ngayon, it's current, uh, you know, which is good, so hopefully tuloy-tuloy yan. But of course, reminding sa mga kababayan natin, you intend to work here, hopefully contact an employer here, right? Uh, with the COVID and, you know, pandemic, I th- we still need many, many uh, hospital workers, kuya, kasama ang registered nurses and physical therapists. It's sa mga napagkasunduan nila yan, so hopefully uh, we'll find out if this becomes a law. Right. Of course, we have to look out also for employers who are, are willing to petition um, mga, mga registered nurses and physical therapists. And sa mga bayan natin, yung hindi pa nagtitik ng NCLEX or yung CGFNS, do that already para mas easier for you to enter here and to find an employer na magpipetition sa inyo leading to a green card. In fact, sa mga proposal nila, Kuya, is ito hindi, yung 4,000 na to is 
hindi ka sa mga pamilya. So, oh. kahit magdala ka ng limang anak na under, under 21, hindi po kinakount yun. So, that's really good news. But as we mentioned, this is only a bill, uh, although approved by both the Senate and the House, kailangan nilang i-reconcile ang differences and hopefully uh, will be signed by the President. So, yun po yung latest updates po natin sa immigration immigration uh, immigration laws. Nako mga kaibigan, uh, tumutok lamang po sa immigration law on your side as we're going to bring you blow-by-blow blow accounts of uh, kung ano po ang mga nangyayari sa ating immigration. And uh, we're closing uh, 2020 na. Napakaraming nangyari ngayong 2020. And uh, 2021, your immigration law on your side. Patuloy po tayong magbibigay serbisyo publiko sa inyo. Hindi lang po para sa mga Pilipinong nandito sa Amerika, but worldwide, especially po na sa Pilipinas. Uh, at this point, Attorney, um, I'd like to give you the floor to uh, speak to our audience uh, regarding our uh, our uh, immigration uh, uh, firm, our law firm in uh, San Francisco. And of course, uh, magpapasko na, Attorney, baka meron kayong message para sa ating uh, mga, avid, uh, mga avid fans ni Attorney Diza. <laughs> uh, Unang-una, maraming salamat at uh, maligay ang Pasko sa iyo at sa lahat ng mga ng PHLV region to your family as well. Uh, and also sa ating mga viewers you know, and listeners, I know it's a very, very difficult time for all of us ngayon, right? We are just happy that we are alive, you know, and still uh, here. Um, we're hoping that this pandemic will end soon, right? Uh, hopefully that you and your family will have a happy and safe Christmas in lahat. Uh, inuulit po natin ang aming opisina, Ridge Immigration Law Group. We have several offices uh, in the U.S. and we have one in Makati and one in China. So as of this time, we do offer free legal consultation. Uh, we do um, telephone or Zoom or messenger consultation. So uh, call our office, contact our um, office at Ridge Immigration Law Group or our telephone number 415-568-3777. Reminding everyone ng aming opisina, Kuya Yo, we've been here for over 40 years na po kami and uh, we have committed to providing a uh, family a uh, successful result in getting the green card. No? Countless immigrants po ang aming natulungan and of course, uh, we always honor that spirit and gift of Christmas. Ito po yung pamilya. So we provide them a, a good legal representation in finding immigration solutions sa ating mga kababayan. So, we have that and hopefully uh, from my family, you know, and my law firm, Reeves Immigration Law Group, to yours, maligayang Pasko po sa inyong lahat. And I'll see you next time. Maraming salamat. Nako, maraming maraming salamat uh, Attorney Diza and from all of us here at PHLV Radio sa Las Vegas na halos isang taon tayong hindi nagkita <laughs> personally <laughs> here at the studio I think uh, the last time that you were here was about uh, mga February I guess of this February, yeah <laughs> <laughs> Almost one year. <laughs> Almost one year. And hopefully, uh, uh, makapasyal ka na dito sa Las Vegas. Pero ganun pa man, mga kaibigan, hindi po hadlang. Ayang mga restrictions na yan, para po makapagbigay kami ng serbisyo publiko sa inyong lahat. Kita nyo naman eh, throughout the, the whole year, eh, ginawa natin ang paraan, nag-zoom kami ni attorney, and we'll do whatever it takes to bring to you the latest uh, in terms of immigration. Dito po sa Immigration Law on Your Side, sa PHLV Radio. Merry Christmas to everyone and uh, Happy New Year to everyone as well. Right there at immigra- that uh, Reeves Immigration Law Group in uh, your area in San Francisco, pati na rin sa mga taga Los Angeles area, nandiyan sa China and then sa Pilipinas, sa Makati na mention ni Attorney, meron po tayong opisina ang Reeves Immigration Law Group sa Makati in uh, Metro Manila. So again, Attorney, maraming salamat and uh, from uh, my family to yours, Merry Christmas po. And uh, yes po, and ingat-ingat po kayo dyan sa buong state ng California. And uh, kami naman po dito nang gagaling sa Nevada, your PHLV radio. This is based in Las Vegas, Nevada. We are here at 3909 South Maryland Parkway. We are at uh, Suites 200 and 215. You can send us a letter, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada 89119. Email info at phlvradio.com. Our website, phlvradio.com website po ng ating mga kaibigan from Reeves Immigration Law Group www.rreeves.com for more information and again from Las Vegas and from San Francisco si attorney maraming salamat po 
We'll see you next time right here at PHLV Radio from Las Vegas. Reeves Immigration Law Group has been representing immigrants for nearly 40 years. Reeves Immigration Law Group has been fighting for its clients through experience and expertise. With immigration lawyers, you can access at reasonable fees even on Saturday. Payment plans are also available. Call us for your immigration solutions. We can do worldwide telephone and Skype consultations. Reeves Immigration Law Group, 1-800-795 8009. Reeves Immigration Law Group has offices in Los Angeles, San Francisco, China, and Philippines. See us at www.rreeves.com. Reeves Immigration Law Group, 1 800 795 8009. Reeves Immigration Law Group has just brought you Immigration Law on Your Side. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Pacific on PHLV Radio. From your PHLV radio family, Merry Christmas and all the best in the coming year. Merry Christmas from your friends at PHLV Radio.